Hello again, it's me, Mars Magica. Today I'm gonna show you how to draw hair. Since it's so organic, hair can be unpredictable. So unless you're an art genius who can draw hair without even trying, it's really understandable to get confused in this area. Hair can make or break your character's look, and when done wrong, it can make your character look like an eldritch horror sewer rat, or like their hair is made of slimy clumps, like this. Here's some old examples of how I used to draw hair. Yeah, it's probably self-explanatory why it doesn't work out, but it's not as bad as others make it seem. Unless you're an art genius, everyone starts off roughly with hair. So if you want your hair to look like this, continue watching for 5 steps that will help you improve in drawing hair. Tip number 1. Know the point or line where the hair flows from so that there's consistency. Here I'm drawing dots and lines over stock photos and arrows where hair is moving out to. Using real models like this, you can see how hair interacts and flows out from their original point. I recommend for you to try this out for yourself, so you can see how hair realistically tends to move in different situations, especially in realistic settings. When you draw hair, ensuring you place a point or line where hair will flow from will make sure your hair is more consistent and organized. It also lets you see how some hair parts are pulled back, pull down, or bounce up depending on the hair type or hairstyle. Tip number two, know the three sections of hair and block in their shapes. There are three sections of hair, the bangs, side hair, and back hair. Knowing these three sections will allow you to split the hair drawing process to make it simple to understand. I highly recommend if you're unfamiliar with drawing hair to block in these three hair parts using large shapes instead of starting off with strands straight on. Here is what I mean by that. Here I block in the front, side, and back with a large brush and I separate them by color using these big shapes as a rough guideline when I sketch. It's really important to plan out the big picture before going to finer details so that you have a good foundation and plan for your hair. These three parts can be easily customizable. For example, long or short side bangs, tied up back hair, and even pulled back front bangs. This step is really important to ensuring a good base to add more details later on. Tip number three, break large shapes using smaller ones. Now that you've got the basic shapes established, you can break down the shape using smaller shapes to add finer details of the hair. For curly hair, I recommend using an S shape like this. S shapes are ribbon-like and tend to bend and twirl, making it a good guideline to draw curly or wavy hair. The more compressed the S, the curlier or kinkier the hair becomes. Here are different examples to show what I mean. For shorter pieces of curly hair, I recommend using C shapes like this. Now onto straight hair. For straight hair, it's important not to use completely straight lines. Use lines that slightly have a curve to it, so they appear natural. For finer details of straight hair, using slightly curved triangles works. The ahoge, a typical anime hair part, can also be drawn using a curved triangle or a C shape. Tip number four, line consistency. When drawing hair, quick brush strokes allow you to establish natural shapes that look smooth. People that are unconfident about their line art tend to sketch them in like this, which looks stringy and scratchy. It's best to practice making quick strokes for longer lines so it's smoother and more confident. If you're using pen pressure, use a brush that exaggerates the pressure sensitivity and provides really thick and thin lines so that the inking flows with the weight of the hair like this. Now, to create a more 3D look, make the outline of the hair thick and the inner lines of the hair thin, like this. For in-between crevices where lines meet, make it a bit thicker so that the line art connects fluidly. Line art like this creates a natural shadow with the hair. Line art is a really important step, since there's no point to a good sketch if your line art ends up looking unrefined or inconsistent. Tip 5. Know your hairstyles. Final step. Now that you know how to draw hair, it's important to look at different images of different hairstyles. References are really important to learning about hair, because thin, thick, curly and straight hair come in all shapes and forms. The more familiar you are with them, the more you're bound to understand how to draw them in anime style. For example, having this knowledge allows me to understand that a pixie cut would be thinner and thus closer to the scalp looking like this, but long curly hair would have volume and look fluffy like this. 
Now you won't be drawing stringy or blocky anime hair, and you can start creating more flow in your character's hairstyle. Thank you so much for watching to the end of this video. If you like this video and want to see more, please consider subscribing and becoming a new flower bud in my garden. Please also like the video and comment what you think and what you'd like to see more of in future videos. Bye bye!